story being told inside my head. I'm going to take a second to talk about towing with a half ton pickup. Now, we are towing a Coachman Apex 289 TBSS. That is a 32 foot overall, a little over 32 foot, uh, including the ton uh, trailer, with a half ton Chevy Silverado. It's a 2017 Silverado 1500 Z71. Um, we're going down the highway right now just had a semi pass us you might have seen that on the driver's side there and very little sway uh, we do have the husky weight distribution hitch i also have the airlift 5000 airbags on the back of the truck uh, but beyond the equipment which obviously is important you know one of the things that i've got that is helping me out is respect for what i'm doing so I respect the fact that this truck is under a load. This truck's doing work. So I'm not pushing it uh, to the max. I'm not really, you know, trying to see what it's got. Uh, I'm, not, uh, I'm not going 70, 80 miles an hour down the road. Um, I'm not in a hurry. You know, we'll, we'll get where we're going when we get there. Um, so, you know, I've got my cruise set uh, between 63 and 65 most of the time. I'm at 65 right now. Um, so again, not in a hurry to get where I'm going. I'm paying attention to what's going on around me. Uh, you know, I, I keep an eye on my mirrors. If I see any trucks or cars coming up, then, you know, I'm prepared to adjust uh, based on what I, I need to do and what I feel in the steering wheel and in the seat of the truck. You can see the trailer behind me. Um, you know, it's got a little bit of motion back there, but it's not uh, terrible. It's, it's not uncontrollable by any means. Now you can see a little bit of, of bouncing here. You know, the road is, is not fantastic uh, where we're at, but it's not terrible. Uh, you know, you see a lot of the videos where, you know, the, the tail wagging the dog, so to speak, the trailer uh, gets to rocking back and forth and the vehicle can't control it and they end up in an accident. You know, there's a lot of situations that can result in that. And, you know, you can speculate whatever you want, say, say whatever you want about what might cause those. But, you know, my opinion, there are, there are a few things that likely cause that. Um, obviously, incorrect equipment setup is, is one of those. You know, you want to have your, uh, your weight uh, properly distributed in a trailer. And I don't mean the weight distribution hitch. I mean the, the load of the trailer. You want to have the proper amount of tongue weight. Um, you don't want to have too much behind the axles because I'm sure you've seen that video of the, uh, the toy car on the treadmill with the weights on the trailer behind it. They move the the weights to the back of the trailer and they bump it and it just just uncontrollable all over the place so it's important to make sure you have the right amount of tongue weight uh, when you're towing so equipment setup um, being the the proper weight distribution in the trailer but then also your equipment setup as far as making sure you've got the right things I mean, don't just throw a two and five sixteenths ball on the back of your truck pick your trailer up and expect to go will it work sure depends on who you ask I mean it, it'll work to get you down the road will it work safely no you know, you want to make sure you have a weight distribution hitch on to properly distribute the load across the axles of the vehicle so that you're not sagging the back of your truck down too much. You know, another thing uh, that's a little bit of a controversy uh, slash point of discussion is airbags. I've seen some people that will say airbags are the way to go when you're towing a vehicle and, or excuse me, towing an RV and you want to get that squat out. Well, airbags will help Airbags are not really the solution. Airbags do not increase your payload capacity. Uh, they're simply meant to level out the vehicle. But airbags, although they might level out the vehicle, don't transfer that weight back onto the front axle. You still have a lot of weight on the rear axle and a lot of weight off the front axle. So your truck is not going to behave like it would normally when it's unloaded. So there's a lot more risk there in those situations for loss of control. So weight distribution hitch is important. Weight distribution hitch is the best idea. Now, I do have the weight distribution hitch, like I said, and the airbags. Now, why do I have the airbags? Like if I just talked about those and you know said, you know, they're not really meant for that. Well, I have the airbags for that last little bit of fine tuning. So the weight distribution hitch got me within an inch uh, on the rear height of the vehicle. 
and then I use the airbags to bring it up just that little bit more. So do I rely on them? No. Are they a tool that I use to help me get back to where I need to be and be a little, be a little bit safer? Absolutely. Another thing you really want to consider is the vehicle you're towing with. Now, when I say the vehicle you're towing with, obviously you want to make sure that you have the right vehicle to tow the setup that you have. You know, there, there's a lot of controversy of, you know, what's too big for a half ton pickup. There are rigs that are too big for half ton pickups. Uh, but you know, 28, 32 feet, somewhere around there, you should be able to tow. As long as your tow vehicle has the payload capacity to handle the ton weight uh, and the passengers in the vehicle, and also has the tow capacity to handle the rig that you've got. Um, as long as you're within all of those specs, then you should be fine. But beyond that, make sure your maintenance is done on your vehicle. So, you know, when I say maintenance, a lot of things come to mind, but, you know, beyond just making sure that you've got your oil changed, making sure that you've got your uh, the proper air in your tires and, you know, that your, your tires are, you know, in good condition and everything like that, you want to make sure that you are doing the proper maintenance on your vehicle as far as shocks and steering and everything like that because those things might not be incredibly noticeable when you're just driving down the road under normal conditions. But you put a load on your vehicle, you put the weight on the back of it, and you, you get that vehicle towing down the road and all of those things become amplified. You also remove a little bit of weight from the front of the vehicle and any issues you have with the front, as far as steering goes, uh, become amplified as well. So you think about that, when you're driving down the road normally, you've got that weight on the front of your vehicle that is more or less kind of stabilizing whatever may be wrong with the front of the vehicle as far as steering components go. You remove that weight and things become a little bit looser. Things that were already loose are even more loose now uh, that they don't have that extra weight on them to kind of hold them in place. So you just, again, amplified whatever problem is there. there. Now I'll give you a good example. So in my truck, uh, it's a 2017, but it does have 98,000 miles on it. So I knew I was getting close to needing shocks and struts. Um, our first time towing this to a camping trip, I noticed that I had a lot of bounce when we went over bridge transitions and bumps and stuff like that. So I went and got new shocks for the rear of the truck and that really helped. So if you're not familiar with a shock absorber and what it does, I mean, obviously the name kind of implies what it does. It absorbs shock, but on the suspension of a vehicle, you have a couple of things. You have your shock absorbers and then you have your springs, whether it's leaf springs or coil springs. Well, a spring does just what it says in the name, it springs. So when you hit a bump, that spring is designed to go like that. So what that shock absorber does is it takes that bounce and that rebound and it minimizes that bounce and that rebound. When you put the weight of the vehicle on those shocks with your springs, and again, it helps control that bounce up and down. Now we went over that bridge transition back there and you saw a little bit of bounce. I changed the rear shocks, but I haven't changed the front struts. I knew that the rear shocks were bad just by looking at them and by the age of them. So I went ahead and changed them. Wasn't 100% certain I was gonna to need to change the front struts, but now that we're underway and I'm towing, I am fairly certain that I'm going to replace the front struts as well uh, once we get back off this trip. It's not terrible, it's not uncontrollable, but it's definitely noticeable. You, you, uh, if you've ever been near a vehicle that has bad shocks, bad struts, um, you know, the, the old Cadillac or the old Lincoln uh, you know, ride that people talk about where you go over a bump and it's just kind of rocking back and forth like that for, for eternity. It's not supposed to do that. When you go over a bump, you should have a little bit of rebound, but it should settle itself and you should uh, be under control fairly easily. So if you have a lot of, a lot of, uh, a lot of wave action, we'll call it, uh, when you go over some bumps, then you probably need shocks and struts. Uh, so again, Make sure your vehicle is in good condition. Make sure all the drivetrain components are good because again, you're putting it under a load, you're putting stress on the vehicle. So anything that 
is worn out or damaged or needs to be replaced is just going to be amplified by whatever travel you're doing, whatever road conditions you hit, anything like that. And you'll notice that any bump you hit, you'll feel it a whole lot more with towing a trailer than you did in your vehicle. We had a conversation a second ago, Chris is in the back seat, and every bump we hit, oh, oh, oh. And I told him, hey, you're gonna have to get used to it because this is the way it's gonna be when we're towing a trailer. So, you know, now you did see a little bit of sway there, um, but again, controllable. You know, I've got the anti-sway bar on the weight distribution hitch. But uh, one thing I have noticed that's interesting, you know, people talk about, uh, you know, semis being the problem when you are towing and you feel that sway when a semi passes. I was prepared for that. I know that, you know, when a semi is coming up, if I'm going to pass a semi, which doesn't happen very often, because like I said, I'm only going 65 miles an hour, but I've had several pass me, I'm prepared for that. What's actually a little more surprising is the wind buffeting or the sway that I get from vehicles passing. So every vehicle that passes has a different uh, profile, so creates different turbulence in the wind, and the vehicles have actually thrown me off a little bit more than the semis have. Again, not uncontrollable, but I felt them a little bit more for two reasons. One, because, like I said, the profile of every vehicle is different. You know, most semis are about the same, so you kind of know what to expect with them. You, you're, you're ready to compensate whatever. Sorry, we're over here on bridges now in Arkansas, and these bridges are just terrible. You have these little uh, these little joints in the bridges every couple of feet, so you're just duh, 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 as you're going over those bridges. But, uh, but again, you know, the semi, uh, you know, most of them have the same profile. They create about the same wind turbulence, obviously a little bit different from rig to rig. Uh, so you kind of know what to expect. But with the profile of every vehicle being different, every one of those passes you, plus they're passing you a lot faster than what the semis are. So, you know, the semis going by you, they're going 70, 72, somewhere around there. So they're going, you know, five to seven miles an hour faster than you. A lot of these vehicles are flying by me at 80, 85 miles an hour, and I'm going 65. So as they're passing by me, not only are they creating a different uh, type of wind turbulence from the semis, but they're also passing me at a lot faster rate of speed, so it happens a lot faster. Again, I'm ready for it. I see them coming. Uh, you know, I, I'm ready to compensate for it, uh, but it just takes a little bit, uh, a little bit different action to control. Another thing you want to consider when you're towing as well is uh, the phrase aim small, miss small, it doesn't really apply, uh, you know, but it, it's, it's somewhere along those lines. Think of it like, you know, dropping a pebble in water. You know, that little action, dropping that pebble in water creates all those ripples. It ripples out to the edge. So same thing when you're towing. A little bit of compensation is going to amplify the length of your rig. So your vehicle, your tow, your, your, your rig that you're towing, everything like that. So, you know, I talked earlier about the accidents that you see. That's another thing too, is that, you know, I, I suspect that in some of those situations, the person who was driving overcompensated for whatever was happening. Um, now I'm not faulting them because, you know, if you get into a sway situation, it's a little unnerving. It's, it, it can be scary and you may not always react the right way. And, and so again, I'm not faulting anybody for that, but when something like that happens, you have to react calmly and you have to react in a small manner. When I say in a small manner, you don't just want to jerk the wheel back the other direction that you need to go. You want to adjust small. You want to get back to where you're going. Um, you know, if I'm, if I'm being pushed by wind off the right side of the road, I have some cushion there. I don't want to go off the right side of the road, but I have some cushion there. You know, I can hit those rumble strips and I can come back over and I can get myself under control. If I'm being pushed to the left, a little bit different because obviously I'm going into traffic and I want to make sure that I don't do that, but I can start adjusting and I can move myself over. I don't have to jerk the vehicle back over to where I'm going. You know, another thing too is to be prepared for that sway. Uh, be prepared for getting yourself under control. So obviously you want to hit the trailer brakes first. You want to grab those trailer brakes and make the trailer uh, slow you down because when you do that, you know, think about it, it doesn't really do it because you're, you're hooked up, it's all solid, but it stretches that, uh, you know, think of it as, as stretching that back out. Um, think of it like a rope. You know, if you have two people holding a rope and you swing the rope around like that, the rope is swinging. If you pull that rope tight, it stops that swinging. Yeah, it's gonna have a little bit of sway as it continues to swing, but you pull that rope tight, which is what the trailer brakes are doing. They're pulling back on the trailer as the vehicle goes forward. It pulls that tight and it kind of stops that motion. 
Um, another thing you can do is as you're hitting the trailer brakes, give your vehicle a little bit of gas. Now you don't want to speed up. That's not something you want to do. You don't want to speed up definitely because you know speed speed kills. Um, so make sure that you're not speeding up, but as you're hitting the trailer brakes, hit the gas a little bit because that amplifies what I was just talking about is as you hit those trailer brakes and you hit the gas, your trailer is slowing down, your vehicle is pulling forward. So it, it causes that, that pull to straighten everything back out. Something else I just thought of that is really important when you're towing. Uh, this applies to a half ton, this applies to three quarter, one ton, I mean, even if you're driving a semi, this would apply, is attentiveness. So I'm paying attention to what the vehicle is doing paying attention to the road around me. I'm constantly monitoring my mirrors, looking in front of me, seeing these cars that are actually cutting me off right now. Um, you know, I've got a, a semi coming up on my left over here. Uh, I don't know if you can see, you'll probably see it in the window as it passes by me, but I know it's coming. So I'm ready for any wind disturbance that's coming from that. Um, I can feel what the vehicle is doing. I can feel the wind. Uh, that's one of the reasons I started the video now is because we're actually in some pretty strong winds right now. Um, and I can feel it. It's moving the rig around. It's moving the truck around. Um, but it's not uncontrollable. And that attentiveness where that comes into play is I'm paying attention and I'm ready if something happens. That way I'm not, it's not a knee jerk reaction. That way I'm not, you know, reacting suddenly and running the risk of doing something that is overcompensating or that is too much. You can, you can see maybe in the video the, uh, the rig being moved around right now because of the wind that we're in. You know, but like I said, I'm, I'm ready for whatever might happen. I'm ready for, you know, the changes in the way things are being towed or the way the, the rig is being towed. So, you know, again, attentiveness is important no matter what you're towing. Um, obviously, it's important even if you're just driving a vehicle, not, not towing, but, uh, you know, as I mentioned earlier with the, you know, the vehicle and things being amplified when you're towing, the importance of attentiveness when you're towing is amplified versus what it is when you're just driving in general. So, another thing to keep in mind for sure. Now, something else I want to add, too, is I mentioned earlier that, you know, I'm going between 63 and 65. Um, obviously, if the speed limit's lower, then I'm, I'm going that speed limit because we've been through some 55 mile an hour areas. But not being in a hurry is important as well. You know, you see, I've got not just myself, but Mindy and Olivia and Chris in the car. So I've got you know the most important things in the world to me in the car. So I want to make sure that I'm being careful. I'm taking as much precaution as I can. You know, I just talked about attentiveness. I talked earlier about not being in a hurry, um, you know, going the speed limit, everything like that. All of those play a factor into making sure that not only am I safe, but my family is safe, that the other drivers on the road are safe, everything like that. So, you know, when you, when you talk about, you know, safety precautions and everything like that, keep that in mind. Um, you know, keep, uh, keep everything that you're going to be doing in mind. And, you know, going back to not being in a hurry when you're towing an RV if you put yourself in a situation where you're in a hurry or you've got to be somewhere within a specific time frame and that specific time frame is going to cause you to have to drive faster than you should or you know uh, take risks it's not worth it um, you know don't ever put yourself in a situation like that when you're towing an RV you should always allow yourself plenty of time and you should always realize I mean if you've got an RV and you're and you're going RVing then you know chances are you're you're on a on a vacation even if it's just a short one uh, but you're trying to relax so why stress yourself out trying to get there quickly trying to you know beat a time you don't have anything to prove to anybody uh, so take your time uh, you know don't uh, don't let your ego get in the way put that in check and enjoy yourself um, like I said a second ago, we're in some pretty strong winds right now. Uh, I could be really stressed out, uh, but I've got my rig set up right. Uh, I, I am prepared, like I said, to do what needs to be done if something starts to go a little bit sideways. Um, 
not literally sideways, but you know, figuratively sideways. But uh, because of that, because of the precautions that I've taken, because of the, the setup that I've got on the rig, and because of knowing what to do if something like that happens, I'm not incredibly stressed out. I mean, there have been a couple of moments where, you know, a little bit white knuckle, uh, just because it's pretty strong wind. Uh, but if the wind gets too bad, I'll fall over. We're not in a hurry to get to where we're going. And, uh, you know, I'm keeping an eye on everything. I'm being attentive. So keep all of that in mind when you're towing. Make sure your family's safe. Make sure everybody around you is safe.